welcome back. I'm Tyler Redlin, and this is the Brush Sauce Theater. And this is the second part of my Sky and Cloud painting series. If you missed part one, I highly recommend starting there. There's a link in the description. Now in this one, it's going to be vastly different. It's going to be dark, atmospheric, and yet stormy skies. We're going to be dropping this over a cityscape. Uh, the things I'll be talking about are uh, the benefits of layering your color, uh, how I interpret reference, thinking in terms of shapes, and painting with atmosphere. Let's begin. All right, so I'd like to preface this uh, next section by saying I'm not a master of painting skies. I've only painted a handful of them in my career. Uh, I have a lot to learn. But with that said, before I begin any kind of project, I like to I like to do a little research and snoop around. So I typed stormy sky painting, and I'm just going to give a kind of my two cents on a handful of things in terms of what I'll be looking for to put into my images and some things I like to avoid. So let's start off with this guy here. This is what I'm going to avoid. This is what happens if you have no hard edges or if you have no edge control. When you have zero edge control, your shapes begin to become lost and therefore this structure begins to crumble. So I'm going to be avoiding a lot of those things as well as some muddy colors. Uh, again, this has some nice shapes, but for me it's not uh, kind of pushing the color palette that I would love to really embellish that uh, you know that you can accomplish with a stormy sky. What is doing that really well I would say is this image. It's got lots of nice subtle greens, yellows, it's got the blues, the purples, the cyans. Right, These are all analogous colors and when put together on a scene like this it's absolutely breathtaking. And this is something way more than a piece of photography uh, will kind of have and, and it, therefore I like to embellish. And so that's something I'm going to be keeping an eye on. I also really love this one. Although it looked better before I zoomed in, this is a little too texture heavy. But again, lots of atmosphere, lots of nice subtle analogous colors. And that's what I'm going to be playing up. I'm going to try to avoid something like this that's overly noisy and busy and finicky with the edges and the shapes. I want something that's going to be a little bit more bold and something a little more direct. This has beautiful colors, but look at the, the, the brushwork itself. It becomes very noisy too texture heavy and it's not making a bold enough statement with the brushwork itself. So so after doing a little observational snooping, hopefully I can avoid some of these pitfalls and aim to hit some of these things that I like. All right, I'd like to first begin by going over my game plan. Now this is my composition, this is my design, these are my shapes. Therefore this is my foundation and my structure from which I can build an image from now. Something like stormy skies, I feel are fairly complex. There's a lot of layering, there's a lot of lighting going around. You know, I have a city. So the best way to do anything that is difficult and kind of vastly complex is to break it down into very simple and fairly abstract shapes. If you can get an interesting arrangement in terms of your design, in terms of your flow, in terms of the rhythm of the shapes, if you can get things looking good like this, this is a fantastic place to start and one of my favorite ways of working and essentially all we have to do from here in terms of my plan is to basically start plugging in the information right so we have uh, the, the dark stormy sky we'll have the city and that's my first move that I always like to make is separate the sky from the um, uh, the ground plane which in this case will be the city then we can explore where the horizon light is and you know add from there any kind of supplemental important information in regarding the shapes. So in this case it might be a few light rays and then a few highlights within the city itself. So when removing the line art what we're left is a very kind of abstract representation of where I'm going to be headed in terms of my structure, in terms of my color cues, and in terms of my shapes. This is just my all-time favorite way of working now in, in, in terms of planning out my lighting, my structure, and my values. So let's move forward. All right, I have a blank canvas, roughly 2,000 pixels wide, and two of my primary references. Uh, so th here's where I kind of like to layer colors. And I know I'm going to be aiming for cooler tones, so I tend to start off a little bit warmer. I know there's some sunlight in the atmosphere. That's generally warmer. And so I'm kind of just baking these things on the canvas. I, I'm going to let them stew and marinate. And if I use a texture brush or brush that's got a little bit of grit and grime to it, um, it will allow the colors to kind of bleed through a little bit if I have the opacity setting uh, on my brush enabled. So this really kind of cool and I can 
basically begin to really see some of the colors begin to talk to each other and begin to become layered. Uh, this is just my preferred way of working. Uh, some other people like to just go in with the gradients, drop those in, uh, and that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm doing a little bit of trial and error here, and I'm just trying to work and massage this canvas over, uh, coming up with lots of fun color combinations. Essentially, I know uh, my final canvas won't really become you know, too much representative of this. I do have the plan in place. And so I just want to start off with a little bit more of these deeper, you know, more rich uh, horizon and atmosphere colors. So a little bit of the cyans, a hint of magentas. And then as we kind of progress with this, what I'm going to do is start to lay in more of the blues um, and, and, and push uh, the cooler tones, kind of get into the, the, the bit of the greens. But yeah, that's a real fun way uh, to work and it allows me to um, experiment with uh, different colors. And this is where I'd like to say, this is all about me interpreting what's in front of me. I, I made some observations with the first paintings. Uh, I now made some mental notes and now I'm looking at the photo reference since I'm not painting underneath a storm quite literally. And I'm trying to embellish the colors that are there. I'm looking at them and I'm, I'm trying to interpret what's there. Um, and, and it's... It's a more relaxing, kind of carefree to, way to approach it. I'm not going one for one. What's up in that color? Uh, the canvas. Uh, although I accidentally, you know, color pick things occasionally. In this particular case, I, I tended to avoid uh, eye dropping the photos because those are it, it. The photography tends to flatten the the colors and the color density that I want to hit in my painting. I know I can do better, and I feel like I'm already kind of hitting there. So I got my, my, my canvas was too wide, and so I'm, I'm going, uh, I, I shrunk uh, the sky and starting to lay out my foundation for that city. I'm just quickly uh, sketching in the city, and it, it shouldn't vary too, too much from my original idea. Now I have a bit of a central street here. It's a simple image. I'm not trying to tell a, a major kind of story or enrich this with, with narrative, though that would make it better. That's not really what this is about. Uh, this is about the stormy sky over the city, and I'm going to keep it as simple as that for this. Uh, now, so that's kind of where I'm heading with it. Uh, now let's get into these clouds. So, uh, again, I, I have a foundation. I'm putting my reference off to the side, and we're going to get in here and actually start uh, doing some more literal painting of things. And right, I, so I, as I mentioned, this is a good foundation. There's, there's a little bit of color density. We have nice oranges uh, transitioning into blues, transitioning into the purples. So I'm trying to sculpt out originally with these kind of painterly brushes that I got from Greg uh, Rutskowski, if that's how I say his name, I probably butchered it. And now I'm just laying in some form, which is something we kind of learned the clouds have uh, from part one. So right, I have my horizon line that, that's kind of a little bit there. And we're basically painting the underside of these clouds. So I'm laying in some color. If it doesn't work, I'm just kind of uh, tweaking the uh, color slider to kind of get uh, the mileage out of each brush stroke that I, that I can get. So I'm trying to paint those simple shapes uh, from my original drawing. I, I have that off to the side as well, and hopefully I can the goal is to stick close to that as I as as I can. Uh, but yeah, I'm leaving a little bit of break in between where the, the clouds are meeting each other because that's where the light is above the clouds and it's going to be kind of bleeding through and making those uh, god rays. And god rays is something I, I see a couple students trying to pull off every now and then, but be careful if you do god rays. They're, they're really something that's easy to overdo and to kind of come off like heavy handed. And if you don't do them with good care and uh, delicacy, it can look uh, very kind of amateurish. So I have a really quick building <laughs> cityscape here. How did I do this? Uh, I'll kind of cover that a little bit, uh, you know, in a few minutes. But essentially, it's just building a, a skyline from photography and extracting uh, the information from a clean sky, and then just using that essentially as a template to block in some colors. Let me know in the comments if you're if that is completely over your head and you'd like to know more about it. I'll 
whip out like a five minute video at some point and talk more about that but let me know otherwise it's it's really boring stuff and i'm gonna pass on that now so again I, i'm making a very nice loose gestural shape and i have my brush i think on the color dodge and i'm going crazy with this i'm just letting these beams of light kind of come shining through in these nice clean shapes and these shapes that were somewhat representational from my original uh, sketch. Uh, I tried to blend them a little bit here, but it, it didn't work too, too much. So what I'm kind of doing as well is I'm, I'm going back and just erasing a little bit of the information. So I kind of have the, the, the rays a first pass block out. Uh, and now I'm using actual like kind of smoke and cloud brushes. Things I generally tell uh, students to avoid using, because again, if it if you use them in a very kind of stampy type of way where you're stamping them around, it it's a, it looks um, very very bad, I guess. I, I don't, for lack of the better words, amateurish. It it's very noticeable and identifiable to anybody that that is a professional, and, and that's what you want to avoid. So I I used it very lightly there, and I'm going back in to manually paint and manually blend some of these colors. So right, we have these nice transitions. We get the yellows and greens closer to the horizon. We have the blue as the foundation of the clouds, and I'm laying in these purples and these magentas over into the darkest of areas. So yeah, I'm having fun. I, I like these shapes. I like how I'm kind of silhouetting that main kind of capital style building. Going back in to clean a little bit of these god rays up, I like them to be a little heavier on maybe like one side or another, and then kind of have a bit of a drag and then taper off as they, they're feathering off to almost nothing. That's kind of like how Ghibli does, Studio Ghibli does their... Um, their god rays in, in, in some shots and I like that I want this to be a little more painterly I, I will you know down the road come back and use some more advanced techniques to push this to a finish but I, I want it to overall have somewhat of a painterly aesthetic I like to have the best of both worlds I like nice cool cinematic uh, details and shapes but I also like a good painting so I'm trying to tread that line you know tread the water on that line where, where I have some of the best of both so I, I put those lighter spots above the clouds as if it's a burst of that sunlight that you can, kind of can see here, almost just wanting to um, kind of combust through the sky. Now this is a little bit of some subsurface scattering on, so I, I tend to get a little more saturated with the colors. The light is bleeding through the clouds, though not that much. And it's a, it's a delicate thing, and I, I haven't really painted too, too many of these skies. I don't, I'm certainly not an authority on it, but I... Uh, I have my reference, they're on my team, and <laughs> hopefully I can pull this off. So I'm adjusting the levels overall, I'm making some silhouettes within the cities basically to add depth, so that's adding some atmospheric perspective to the city itself. I think having a good clean skyline is a good fun thing, um, but I'm also trying to get a little bit of that atmosphere in there. I don't want to go too much, not nearly as much as we would see on a, on a, on a day scene but enough to, to kind of hide some depth and, I, and show uh, some overlaps, which is also what I'm doing here. I'm, I made a new layer and I'm using a big fat soft airbrush like some of those paintings did in ways I didn't prefer. And I'm basically getting the shapes to pop of some of these buildings. So early on in a painting like this, it's all about the readability and it's all about the shapes with, you know, the shapes and the shapes within the shapes. If I can show more with less, just by kind of hinting and suggesting at forms and edges, then that's the route that's usually good for me. So I'm making very clean selections with the, the lasso tool and the, and the polygonal uh, lasso tool, and that allows me to get really crisp edges. And again, this is something you could use photos for or, or any other kind of technique to, to get your nice clean edges. So I'm just dragging atmosphere and light into this scene at this point. I, I have uh, these buildings more or less all in the same layer. I have my brush mode sometimes on overlay overlay sorry sometimes on screen and I'm just letting the colors do a little bit of blending so here's exactly what I do for these silhouettes right I I have a photo that has a simple sky and I select the buildings out of it and I basically drag them into my scene I position them where I like and then I just fill the whole layer with a solid color like I just did there and then that way it gets really clean buildings and I can kind of move things around 
So it's a fun way of getting some nice clean uh, details without a tremendous amount of work. And now uh, I'm just doing a little bit of blending, uh, not blending, but uh, value adjustments so I can make sure I can say everything I need to with uh, the painting. But I, I don't want to go for an insane amount of detail, not just yet. I, I may end up just pushing this later, but uh, that would be like just five hours of me doodling little tiles on a roof and uh, wouldn't be very entertaining for now. So again, here, here's that same photo technique, right? Uh, clean buildings, extracted with no sky. Position it where you want the shapes. Lock the layer or, or hit command or control to select a layer. And then I have the selection and then I can fill it uh, with a color and basically put atmosphere around it. So yeah, I lighten the sky a little bit and that'll allow me to push a few more of these value pushes that you can see me getting in here with these selections. So it's big and bold, nice clear shapes, trying not to get overly repetitive with my mark making and my, my shapes in general, of course. That would make for a very, you know, boring rhythm in, in terms of my design. So it, that's why I like to figure that out at the very beginning, because that, that's my... That's my compass that's going to guide me through a complex, uh, well, a, a somewhat co uh, complex scene like this. And now this is just a lot of me just kind of fiddling and fussing with uh, color adjustments and, and values things. But let, let's say if I wanted to finish this to a full color scene, a full color sketch, or even a full on painting. It, for me, it's all about just making really careful selections and kind of just filling those um, you know, painting it in, in a very micro type of way now that I have a lot of the macro established. And basically how far you want to zoom in or how far or how detailed I want to get that, that's up to the individual here. I, if this was just a sketch, I'd probably leave it kind of right about here. I don't, I wouldn't go too, too busy or too further with it. And, but this will get you to a finished uh, image or finished painting uh, kind of by using not too too many advanced techniques it's just kind of raw painting and letting the colors type of mingle now if i really wanted to push this to a uh, higher detail or more accuracy i would you know i'm going to build the 3d model of the city or i'm going to start using heavy photography and, and dumping that into the shapes basically and yeah i'll do a little of that on an extreme time lapse kind of like i did the ocean bit at the end of the last video but th this was some you know intentionally or the intent with the video was supposed to be about the sky and the, and the atmosphere things like that and here's this kind of me just here dabbing a few of the highlights around the building so if you're really careful about that and you're really kind of you know have some references on how these shapes of these buildings would look you can kind of place them in you know meet uh, worthwhile uh, shapes and arrangements so that you can basically uh, highlight some of the forms in, in the, the city itself but this is essentially just gonna wrap up uh, this part of uh, the demonstration and hopefully it's enough to kind of show you how how I think or how I structure a scene like this and some of these techniques that I go about in terms of approaching it so if there's any questions at all about anything I covered here again please let me know down below I'll try to get to it as soon as I can and uh, the next, I'll do one more cloud or sky video, which I think I'll do more of like a sunset. Maybe it'll be above the clouds in this one with like a, a castle in the sky rising above it or something. something I don't know. Uh, let me know what you would want to see in a sunset. Maybe I can make it work. Maybe I can make it happen. And uh, I would also want to thank you guys at, at uh, this point for helping me just uh, reach the 50,000 uh, subscriber mark uh, about a week or so ago. Really happy and pleased about that. Um, and your support means everything to me. But yeah, this is kind of just wrapping up it, the, the color sketch portion of it. I just sculpt forms until I'm basically bored with things or if I don't need to detail things any further. Now is a little insight into what I would do if I were to really push this to a, a finish. Really clean finish anyway, something beyond surface level kind of painting. And that would, that would be, I'd, I'd make a 3D model of the city as I did here. Uh, now that's in Cinema 4D, I rendered it in Octane. Uh, and then even after getting something fancy like that, if, if you want to call it fancy, I do, <laughs> uh, it still needs a lot of overpainting and kind of post work to make it 
look really good and sit into my scene, sit into my sketch. Um, the next thing I would do, I may use a lot of photography to enhance a, a detail or two here and there that I don't want to paint by hand. So in this case, I'm color correcting the sky. You know, I'm really trying to make it match my painting, not vice versa. I don't, I don't care what the photo is doing in terms of color. I want it, the color in my image. And then I basically drop it right in over my sky, you know, my design sky and balance the values out, uh, stretch it, skew it, do whatever I can. And then basically just kind of blend it in and mask it off and get it to sit very subtly in there. And I may do similar things with the city itself. Now, currently, as of the recording of this, I have not finished this image. It would take a lot of detail or a lot of, you know, a couple hours to really get in there and paint it to the level I want. So maybe I can update that at the beginning of the next video. Uh, let me know if you want to see see some of that. Otherwise, I'll just do the sunset. Um, but anyways, this is a story for another day. So in conclusion, there are many ways to approach stormy skies or any skies for that matter. It will entirely depend on what you are aiming for in regards to the look and the feel. And this boils down to your, your purpose intended for the image itself. Now, I would not align my work with any kind of fine art, but I constantly reference and study it. My paintings are more based on design principles and the goal of reading quickly and making a bit of a statement. Attributes that are more commonly found in concept art. Either way, I'd recommend not limiting yourself to your reference and push beyond it. Again, I tend to focus on shapes, and then I go for forms, and then I apply color and light those. This ensures that I'm only ever focusing on one aspect of the painting at a time. So I'll catch you guys next time. Later. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy, Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.